This segment is brought to you by Jigmaster Jigs. When in doubt, get the jig out. Go to jigmasters.com and use promo code PNF20 and save 20% off your next jig order today. Welcome to the Paddle and Fin Podcast Network. This is the final cast segment with your hosts, Brad Hicks and Josh Eldridge, where we cast our final opinions on all products, good and bad. Welcome to the final cast. Welcome back to the final cast on the Paddle and Fin Podcast Network. I'm Brad. And I'm Josh. Uh, we got a episode tonight where we're going to talk about a few miscellaneous uh, random. products. Yeah, random. Random, random, random products. Random episode. Yeah. It, no real structure here. We just had the 4th of July weekend. I was busy. Uh, did a bunch of crap. So didn't really get prepared for this. So here we it are. happens. <laughs> it happens. Yeah, it was a crazy good. weekend. I had a crazy weekend, too. Went fishing Friday and then fished Sunday and then had Fourth of July stuff with the family on Saturday. So that's the exact same thing I did. So yeah. So uh, tonight Brad's gonna be talking about his recent uh, big purchase. Brad got himself a Torquedo. So I'm gonna ask Brad a little bit of questions. We're gonna keep this episode a little short and sweet tonight too. So um we don't bore you guys too much with it but um you know so and then i'm going to go over a new bait that i've been kind of throwing a little bit in the past uh, couple months uh, which is the mega bass dark sleeper um that bait is i don't know if it's necessarily new to the scene this year or if it came in at the end of the last year or if it's been around, but I think I got hip to hearing about it through Facebook last year towards the end of the year. So, uh, but this year was the first year that I decided to throw it. And so we'll go over that also. So, but uh, yeah, so random episode, uh, Brad and I uh, really haven't had anything to review. I mean, we, I need to get you those biz baits still. Oh yeah. Um, but uh yeah, other than that, we didn't have anything that we both uh, kind of messed with that was the same lately. So, sorry guys, won't be uh, the most exciting episode, but should be good. So, I think people want to hear about it. Uh, I'm curious about these uh, swim baits you're talking about. Yeah, they're pretty cool, man. So it, it'll uh, it'll be a good bait. I think you'll like it if you get some. Um, but yeah, so let's jump into Torquedo. So, for those that follow Brad on social media, you have been seeing Brad post random 10 to 20 second clips of him <laughs> going, uh, going either usually upstream in a torpedo, and then he has this goofy laugh at the end of it. And um, your most recent one was <laughs> featuring your wife, who's steadily trying to paddle behind you, and you kick the torpedo on and scream "Sayonara, sucker!" and then laugh. <laughs> So <laughs> you, you didn't hear in that video where she says, see you loser. <laughs> I, w- I heard it, but nobody else on video did. You should have left that part in. That would have completed what? it. You didn't hear it. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, uh, so Brad, and for those that don't know, also Brad likes to try to embarrass his wife, Allie on a regular basis. Um, <laughs> I think you shared one of your memory videos and it was you yelling meat in the meat department. Oh yeah. She's behind you. It's hilarious. But I got a couple more of those. There's like a couscous one and I found pizza and chips. I got like four of those videos. (laughs) Nice. You have to keep sharing them. (laughs) But, uh, so Brad recently decided to, um, go with the Torquedo. Um, Brad, I know you, that you were, um, in a little bit of, uh, debate with yourself in regards to either getting a pedal drive or putting a motor on your bonafide. So, uh, what, what kind of triggered you to head in the direction of just putting a torpedo on that bonafide? Man, I, I, I like the bonafide platform, dude. It, it's so easy to fish off of. Um, I just, I didn't know. I don't know, dude. So there, there's some, something about the pedal drive I just didn't like for some reason. I don't know why. 
But I tried that Torquedo out. I was like, man, that's pretty cool. And that, that'll help me in tournaments because this all started because I was paddling in 25 mile an hour wind and uh, went like four or five miles or something. And I had to ice my shoulders. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man, that can be rough. I can imagine. Yeah, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know exactly. I just, I just pulled the trigger. <laughs> yeah. So how hard was it for you to set up? I know you had commented in the group chat that you'd been talking to Jeff and several other people in regards to trying to get all your cards lined up as far as the installation and asking a bunch of questions about performance and stuff. So how did uh, how did the installation go over? Because I know you you started on it, and I think it took you about, I don't know, not that it took you this long, but I know it took you this long to get like everything together to be able to yeah. do the install. It was about a week to a week and a half, I think. Yeah, because I had to buy gear tracks and then uh, the bonafide steering kit for the foot pedals. Uh, so I'd, I actually had to wait a, a little while for those because nobody had them in stock. Bonafide didn't have them stock. I ended up having to buy them full price instead of using my discount to buy them. But yeah. it is what it is. How'd the but installation go? It, it was pretty simple. I I I watched or I followed along with a, a video of Jeff uh, Little and uh, John Hipsher that mm -hmm. they did for Bonafide and they posted on YouTube. Uh, I watched that video and then I saw another video where Jeff Little went to some outfitter out in Virginia. I forget what I forget what. I think that's where it was. I forget what outfitter it was, but I found that video to be a little bit more useful hooking it up to a bonafide than the other video. For, for some reason, I had a couple issues with the other one, but um, for the most part, it was easy. And when it came to installing the tubes and running the line through the hull, I, I was kind of a little nervous because I accidentally cut that uh, that um, the tube and I didn't pull the specter line all the way through. So I ended up cutting off a little bit too much of the line. But but luckily for me, I ended up uh, uh, spooling like four wraps around the uh, steering kit that go onto the back of the foot pedals for Bonafide. So all I had to do was a uh, one or two knob twist, and then I had enough line to hook it to the back of the Torquedo. Okay. So uh, what are those used for? That the cordage that you're talking about that you cut short. Oh, so you got tubes that run inside the hole. They're like uh, they look like water lines for a uh, fridge. Yeah. Um, you run those through. You have holes drilled on the front where they come out and connect to the foot pedals, and then onto the uh, holes coming out the back where they connect to the motor. Um, then you have these this line. It's called Spectre cable that runs from foot pedal through the through the hole through the uh, tubing, and then back to the uh, motor. And that's what controls your motor. You're, you're controlling it by foot. So when, when you have those uh, those lines connected to foot pedals, you know, whatever way you're pushing is the way you're going to be turning, which kind of throws me off because yeah. I'm, I'm used to, like, zero-turn mowers, you know, where you push you push right, up, right, and you're turning left. Yeah. It, it's, it's opposite on the Bonafide for a motor. Yeah. But what's All up? right. So, um, when you were looking, I've always looked at those cables cause I know like Mike has them and stuff like that and they don't look very strong, but did you like test the strength of them or, you know, what is that stuff you think is made out of? I don't even know what it's made out of. I should look it up right now, but that it is, it feels strong. I know yeah. when you, after you go and tie everything together, they want you to, uh, um, heat up the, the ends. So it, you know. Kind of like a nylon cord, how yeah. it Price. gels together. Yeah. Uh, so what you you cut that at like a forty five degree angle, and then you heat it up and let it cool, and it like kind of glues it together. But I'm not sure what that stuff's made out of. But I don't I don't have I don't have the feeling that that stuff will snap or anything. Yeah. Uh, so what else? Uh, did you run any other issues? Hmm. Anything that was kind of tricky for anybody who might be interested in getting it? Kind of a, a heads up? Yeah, like I said, the tubing and the wire was hard to run. The, the tubing, after you cut it, you want to hold it with a uh, vice grip or something so it don't slide back into the hole. 
Yeah. And then what you do is you, you barely heat up the end of that tubing, and then you'll take like a uh, the end of a pin right here, and you'll like uh, mushroom the tube out so it don't slip in. Yeah. And then I also had a hard time, like I I use the different kind of epoxy for it, but you're supposed to put epoxy around that mushroom head so so it stays. Yeah. So I, I ended up getting a little messy with that, so that was kind of stupid of me, but. Other than yeah. that, so what? Think... Anything else? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, I was just yeah. I'm sitting here thinking about the uh, the the reverse for the motor. That that was for some. It's still not working right, but I think it's because I had the Yak Gadget uh, um, adjust the flex pole system in the back. Uh-huh. I think if I I think if I took that off and then ran the uh, eyelets up toward me on the back tracks, I think it would work. But right now I'm having a hard time using that to go in reverse. I see. So you've got those eyelets mounted on the, uh, the yak, yak gadget anchor thing. Well, like saying? right. Yeah. Right behind it. Okay. Is it in like the way or something like that? Is it like rubbing kinda, or something? Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why, but that, um, I, I'm trying to think of a way where I can use the things that go in the gear tracks for the Yak Gadget system and then screw the eyelet into it that so it holds that all down and I can still use the eyelet. I'm trying to think of a way to do that, but I haven't really uh, figured out a way yet. I wonder if maybe you go to like the hardware store and see if you can get longer eyelets but still yeah. use that knob. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I was th- thinking about something like that. I just, I'd probably have you kind of need the knobs. You kind of need those knobs for that anchor system because if you go to try to screw in a eyelet just into the the T bolt itself, it's probably going to want to uh, dig down inside the the grooves that are cut out the the pre cut um, mm-hmm. slots. But uh, yeah, because uh, the yeah the the tie down system kind of works the same way if you're just using them right if i remember correctly it's almost like a knob that sits in so i wonder mm-hmm. if you just got a, like a longer one or something you might be able to because i'm sure yeah. they probably have that in a hardware store oh yeah the, I, i've looked before <laughs> because before i bought those eyelets from yak attack i was looking at longer ones but i didn't like how tall they were yeah so that's why i bought the yak attack ones they're like set I don't know, an inch yeah. sitting above your deck. The other ones I saw were like two inches tall and I didn't want my line hanging up off the deck that much. Yeah. So what, um, motor mount did you end up using for the Torquedo? Uh, the four Oh three AC, the one that goes into the bolts on the back of the bonafide. So it came with the mount. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know if you bought like a Yak Gadget one or an aftermarket one or something. Oh no, no, I just went with a regular to- Torquedo. But this—that's why I got this Torquedo was because it's compatible with the Yak Gadget pole. I don't know if you—you've you, well, you've seen the uh, Quick Stop anchor system. It yeah. goes in the same. Uh, it goes into the same uh, inserts on the back on the Bonafide. Yeah, the micro power pole uh pattern uh, yeah bolt pattern yeah so if i was to have that i couldn't mount the motor on it at the same time that's why i went with the flex system yeah well so i, I knew those. also though i didn't know though if well i guess not because yeah that that torquedo mount is kind of specific i mean you can buy other mounts for torquedos but i think that's kind of more for like uh not the torquedo but like a um Oh, I can't even, uh, just like utilizing like a normal, like, you know, like motor not being Torquedo, you know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Brian used to have his trolling motor on the back. Yeah. Like the trolling motor. But I think because if you buy a trolling motor, it usually has like, it doesn't have the mount. You usually have to buy something in it that mounts to the, you know, for instance, like the Yak Gadget one that you can buy. Mm-hmm. But yeah. So. Yeah, I've uh, been put. I've put my um, Yak gadget together, but the day that I was going to use it, I ended up not utilizing it because we went like we went somewhere where you have to, um, 
you like you're walking your kayak through like a small creek and stuff like that so like the overhang is real bad yeah and it ended up being such a calm hot day that you didn't even need an anchor like you, yeah like you know, it's been so hot and calm here in ohio the past like week week and a half it's been ridiculous so but um yeah i got mine put put on there at first i was like kind of like not overwhelmed, but I was like, I, I, I'm sitting there like, oh, where's it? I, I couldn't find the directions. And they were like sitting on the floor. Like I dropped <laughs> them and they blew across the floor and I couldn't yeah. find them. And I put it all together and then saw them sitting there on the ground. <laughs> so you're like, oh, sweet. I did do it right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the performance so far. Have you used it in the lake yet? No. So, uh, I've been uh, fishing the river with it, but I- I'm real excited to try it on the lake. I think I'm going to do it this weekend because we got a tournament coming up, and I'm going to go down to Rocky Fork and check it out. But uh, rivers, that thing, man, I-, I-, I travel upstream going four mile an hour. Yeah. When I get I- – I'll just tell you. So I, I put in an East-, East River landing, and I-, I went all the way up into Dayton. And then came all the way back. So I, I wanted to go and see how hard that was. So the first like mile, I was probably going four mile an hour. Um, as I got near shallow water and real fast moving water, the, the current is probably about two, three mile an hour there. Mm-hmm. And um, I was going 2.75 miles an hour up, up that fast current. And it was shallow there. And I think before my skeg started dragging, I think I was in 1.4 feet of water. Nice. So at that point I'm lifting the motor, I'm getting out and I'm just dragging the kayak until I get over the riffles and then head back up. Yeah. So I, it took me from East river landing to Dryden road. I got there in about 20 minutes. Yeah. So with the addition of that Torquedo, how hard did it make for you to be physically dragging your kayak at that point? Were you like, oh man? Well, I was at first, but it's actually not bad at all. Yeah. But the thing that does suck is having that uh having that mount on the back. I can't load that kayak up like I tip- typically could to go to like a river spot, you know, like one of my spots up north of Dayton or something. Uh, yeah. I, I need I need a boat ramp to use it because it's just it it, it holds my kayak out like another ten inches and yeah you know, wobbles and I don't I don't want to push pressure onto the back of the mountain stuff when I'm strapping it in yeah so I I have to keep that trailer it's I'm specifically using it for boat ramps and all that stuff yeah and you just got a new kayak for the river specifically now didn't you yeah I did bonafide RS one seventeen Heck yeah, dude. So did you kind of monitor like how much battery you used and how far you traveled when you did that? Yeah. Uh, the first day I got it, I put it together. Uh, then I went out. I didn't really fish that night. I just went out to try it. I didn't have it set up completely. And I had to work out some kinks and stuff too. So I went out with about 20% battery and I went, I don't know three miles maybe yeah until well i didn't let it die all the way either i got down it was at 28 percent and i got down to 10 percent by the time i was done and i went about three miles and that was at full throttle too of course you're going up into current you're going to be using more battery yeah so any like cons in regards to you know your obviously you haven't used it in a lake but anything kind of weird that stood out that you know, anybody needs to be aware of. Mm, I, I, like I said, the con would be loading it to take it to a spot where I, I couldn't, but that's why I got my river kayaks. So it's not a big deal. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. I'm not, I'm not, I haven't you, had, I've, I've gotten like four trips out of it so far. So I'm, yeah, still kind of new with it. But have you tried to, um, like, face and fish in the current with it? Yeah, so that's actually really cool. I was sitting in a uh, 
an eddy that was well, i'm trying to think maybe it wasn't an eddy maybe it's just a big bend in the river where the current was just coming around like a mile or two an hour but yeah i was sitting there and i had my throttle set at like 1.2 mile an hour and i was sitting there um uh, moving my foot pedals and just casting you know working my bait so that that was pretty cool was it kind of weird to be trying to utilize your feet while you're fishing <laughs> a little bit yeah <laughs> <laughs> it sounds yeah. like it would be uh, i would like, probably push the wrong direction so i oh i i still push wrong directions because like i told you it's not it's not like a zero turn mo- mower yeah. so i'm not used to it so if i'm pressing my right foot pedal up you're going right yeah usually like a zero turn mower you push up on your right side you're going left <laughs> so i'm always going the wrong way. i'm like dang it man i need to get used to this that's funny uh anything else you got for us mm, no I, i'm i'm happy with the battery that comes with it for for sure so far did you get like, the big one or the smaller battery the big yeah I, there's no way if i had the smaller one i i wouldn't even be able to go I, I would be able to go East River to Dryden Road, and then that's it, probably. Yeah. But uh, my last trip there, I probably got... I, I was a little bit more conservative this time because I went up to up to the riffles, and then I anchored. So this is cool. I used the uh, uh, the bomb anchor. Mm-hmm. I anchored in that three-mile-an-hour current. I let out some line, like you said, that was 10, 15 feet long. Yeah. I did not. I did not move at all. I nice. got to sit there and cast. I got to work these br- uh, um, current breaks and everything. I caught fish almost off all these current breaks in the water. I was like, I've never been able to do this. This is awesome. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Heck yeah, dude. Well, it sounds like you're happy with the purchase so far. I'm, I'll be excited to hear how uh, your first lake trip goes in it. I know. I'm real excited. Uh, the so the route that I have mapped at. Uh, Rocky Fork. I didn't see how far it is, but it looks like it might be a little bit, like, kind of. What well, look? I don't know. It might be a couple miles. So I, I'm interested to see how it does. Yeah. Be seeing Brad scooting all along everywhere. I'm gonna have to pull Justin around when we pre-fish. <laughs> <laughs> no way, dude. He's got pedal drive. Oh uh, yeah. I. Uh, that's another thing. I want to see how how well he can keep up with me at full throttle. Nah, he won't be able to, man. I mean, oh. you can you can get full throttle on that thing, dude. You're going to probably be pushing like six in the sixes. Mm-hmm. And with the pedal drive, you can get like five, possibly six, depending on how heavy that kayak is. Mm-hmm. Justin's a skinny dude, but he's a tall guy. And um, like the problem is, is that sustaining that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I could go sustain three miles an hour for quite some time though when you get up in the fours you know like brian and i did a race one time and i was in the big rig and he was in in the blue sky and we got up to like between four and a half and five but you can only maintain it for like you know just a little bit of time like a few minutes maybe you know and then you're like yeah that's not happening that's not happening for a sustained amount of time so yeah, he has that Slayer Max. It's a it's a little bit quicker both than others, but I, I think he could sustain four at like Yeah, but your full throttle, dude, on that bonafide on the lake, dude, you're gonna be hitting like in the six. I, six I think I will be hitting six be- well, maybe. I, I come downstream and I'm hitting almost six and a half with current. You know, if you push your seat up further too, or if you're leaning probably more towards the front of your boat, you're gonna go faster. Uh. Oh, yeah. So the Adjusting more the weight, yeah, the more weight that you have at the front of that kayak, the faster it is. That's why when Jeff did a video, he was talking about that. And he specifically talked about it when they did it in the Kilroy HD. Because Kilroy HD, you can, it's, the seat is mounted on a gear track that runs the entire inside of the deck, or um, cockpit of the boat, right? Yeah. So you can, but he did one where his feet are crammed so far up underneath the boat. And he's like, this is kind of dangerous because he's, can't really control yeah. you know the foot control steering real well but he got that thing in the high sixes because of it like the fr- the more weight that you have on the front of it the better that motor the more efficient it becomes so yeah <laughs> there's certain kayaks that just perform better with the torquedo based on that 
that fact alone. So, dude, I'm kind of like interested in uh, installing that Torquedo on the RS117 because I hear that it is fast. <laughs> that thing on it, I'm like, man, I want. I just want to see how fast I can get it to go. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for information, Brad. No problem. Good times. I'm, I'm sure there's more we could talk about, but I'm still new with it. Yeah. We'll uh, we'll be looking forward to your silly ass videos too. Oh, uh, there there's gonna be more. I I have like four on my phone right now <laughs> that I'm just waiting to post. <laughs> All right, so we'll move into what I'm going to talk about tonight, which is the Mega Bass Dark Sleeper Swim Bait. Um, so this is a little plastic um, swim bait uh, meant for the bottom. It's uh, paddle tail style, and um, it comes in about 10 different colors. And looking at the website, it has it as... Uh, let me see... What what it's, color are you using mostly? Um, I've been buying a bunch of different colors, man. I haven't really been specific. Okay. Um, they have really weird names, like Japanese names. Um, <laughs> so I've used a dark shad. I've used the uh, Yoshinobori, the Hannah Hayes, the Hayes. Um, I've used a bunch of them, except for maybe like the clear chartreuse. There's a clear pink. Uh, there's one called the Donko, which is kind of like black with gold um, spots. Oh, yeah. There's a Mutsuguru. <laughs> it's like gold with, uh, I was throwing that the other day. So uh, for those who haven't seen this bait, um, it really resembles a lot of uh, bait fish, especially bottom bait fish. Um, some people want to say like it's a good goby imitation. Um what did you say that you thought it resembled, resembled that we see in the rivers around here? A mad tom. A mad tom, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I've seen those before in the rivers, especially those little really, limey. Yeah, um, they their color selection super, super, super colorful. Like um, so, it's it's kind of weird because when you first look at it, you're like, um, you know, like the colors kind of throw you off a little bit, but a little, when you put them in the water, that's kind of, and you look down upon them, that's where it kind of shines. Um, some of the colors that, you know, I was like, oh, that looks really good. Like when you're looking at it from the top of it. Yeah. That's the mad Tom. Yep. Um, so I've heard stone rollers, you know? Yeah, that's another one. Stone rollers. So, um, but this thing really excels, um, when you're fishing for smallmouth, I know that Dusty has been, he's used them for, he's been real high up on them, you know, for quite some time. Um, but they also, they make these in a three inch bait, uh, three eighths ounce, half ounce, and three quarters ounce. I did find some shorter ones. They're just like, I want to say two and three quarters at quarter ounce. I found them, I think I ordered them from Dick's Sporting Goods. Mm hmm. Or no, I'm sorry, uh, Cabela's had them. And I didn't even know they made a quarter ounce ones because when you buy them in the store, there's usually the smallest weights, three eighths ounce. Oh, so yeah. when I saw those quarter ounce ones, I got excited because I was like, oh, dude, I can throw those in the river. Because the three eighths ounce, man, if you're throwing that and you're like in somewhat shallow water, it tries to hang up some. Um, yeah. So I bought some quarter ounce ones for more shallow stuff, especially for the rivers. But the bait excels. It's it's a like a bottom bouncing sort of. You know, you can swim it a little bit too, but you know, just simple jigging it, bouncing off the bottom, it works really well. Um, so it's kind of like a uh, a grub, but looks more like a bait fish. Yeah, definitely um some of the features about it uh, it's a single hook um and the hook is hidden on the first set of um what do we say uh <laughs> why did i just forget the fin name <laughs> oh do the dorsal the dorsal first yeah force <laughs> it sits in there now i fished this with mike recently and mike was thinking that those dorsal fins were causing him issues with hook sets uh -huh. um 
<clears throat> for it being hidden in the dorsal fin, it's really good as far as being weedless like that. Oh, and cool. uh, deflects um, cover a little bit because those dorsal fins are really soft. Like, they're real pliable. They're not hard. They appear to be, like, a little on the hard side, like, you know, they would cause an issue. But they are they are fairly uh, pliable, and they move real easy. So, um, That's interesting. Yeah. So, the the hook, is it in the middle of two little flaps, then? Yeah. Is that how, okay. Yep. That's cool. Yeah, there's a flap on each side basically. So and it's and it's pretty thin, but the way it, if you look at the bait when it gets closer to the bottom, the plastic gets thicker. So yeah. it kind of but that top part of it's real flimsy. So um uh it's great smallmouth bait. Um um you know, if you're fishing somewhere especially if uh smallmouth are on the deeper side, um it's a great bait um well, i was fishing this recently where we're fishing a point and then the water is only like a foot and a half deep and i would cast up onto it and drag it and bounce it off the bottom and let it because on this point the water drops to 10 feet fairly quickly and so you can just keep bringing it down um i i do tell you though like i was sewing a three eighths ounce when i was doing that but mm-hmm. When it goes to drop like in the 10 to 15 inch or t- 10 to 15 foot uh, range that a half ounce is a lot better and three quarter ounce obviously is even better the deeper you go because that bait does take some time to go down if you're throwing the light ones. Uh, it takes a lot more time than what I thought because it feels it's it's weighted like on the bottom of the plastic so i'm like yeah man even maybe a three eighths is gonna sink fairly quickly but it's got like a the plastic has a flat profile on the bottom so i think it causes a lot of resistance so it's it'll slowly drop um it's uh fairly good for snags depending on what kind of rocks you're throwing in um if you're throwing in like a lot of man-made jagged type rock formation it can get hung up um sometimes i wonder if though if it's the bait getting hung up or if my line is falling you know because a lot of times when i when i tend to fish the bottom i tend to fish a little on the slow side like kind of like extreme slow i guess (laughs) yeah so i'll let it sit a lot of times for some time and i think my line might be dropping in actually getting hung up on rocks because there's a lot of times where i've been hung up and i think the bait's stuck and it's not it's my lines jammed in and then i've caused the bait to move into that yeah into that snag and because i've been fishing this thing and i'll notice that i have nicks like three feet up on my line so uh just beware if you are fishing that definitely recheck and retie uh, your line a lot because you're going to spend a lot of time on the rock. So this, um, so this bait, uh, says five ninety nine. It, it does it come in a pack or you just get one? No, you just get one. It's five ninety nine per, per oh, bait. Okay. I How think durable? I've only, I've, I have had, I have like, I've fished with it. It's real durable. Like it doesn't tear. Okay. It's not like a Kai tech. Um, you know, I don't even know that it ha- it has like a little bit of movement from the tail, but it's not like a ton. So um, it's super durable, though. Like I've fished with the same ones. I think I've maybe lost one or two of these baits out of like five. And then recently I just bought another 10 of them. So I think for soon. <laughs> yeah, I have a, a bunch right here. Nice. I... I want to know what color would you throw for the river? Cause none of these really catch my eye. That's the thing, dude. That's, that's, it's, they're kind of weird looking, but I think you could get away with like pretty much any of them. man. the thing, like, I really like that dark shad one for muddy water. The one with the black or the, the black with the, here's one. I don't know if you guys can see it. That's, that's the, the haze one. Uh, let me see. I think so. Uh, Looks like Hannah Hayes or Hayes. Yeah, it's one that's kind of a greenish color on top, and it's got a little bit of blue and orange on the side. So this that's is right. one of the quarter ounce ones, and it's only uh, uh, 
2.4 inch bait that's pretty small actually so but yeah that thing would i think that thing would be killer it's like the perfect size dude what you would see in the river all the time yeah i was gonna say that that's why i, I throw a lot of the big joshies at her like two and three quarter but my kai they're usually like 3.8 so. yeah but i ended up buying them i bought 10 of them because i had a 50 dollars gift certificate for father's day so i was like yeah Dude. let's get some more dark sleepers and when, uh, well and when i went ship uh shopping for them i was like oh they, they make these things in quarter ounce ones you know because the three eighths ounce it work in the river but you're gonna have to have a little bit of depth or speed to the water um yeah you're gonna be catching the bottom a lot and um so I was like, why not? We'll try these quarters and see how they do. I haven't had a chance to throw them. I haven't been on the river, dude, and for a long time now. I can't. I know it's, you're, you're it's been being almost converted. It's been a, like dang near a month. I, it's because I've been catching huge fish like lately, man, like on the lakes. Yeah. And I mean, I went up north and fished for the KBF monthly, and I caught like four largemouth that were – in the 18 to 19 and a half inch range that were all like five pounders. Like they were just Jeez. enormous dude. And then uh, that night or it right in the evening when it started to get dark, I hooked up with like a 17 and three inch, or three quarter inch, uh, small mouth. So, but, uh, that's, yeah, the small mouth gotten a little harder to catch up there because they've gone deep during the day. Like it'd be, they're probably not really moving up. Uh, shallow yeah. until it's nighttime so yeah uh, i think i think i know where you're <laughs> fishing too yeah wink, wink. <laughs> but uh so but i've um this bait uh i if i remember correctly mike did throw it and had success with it uh when we were at st Clair. so it's, it's a great goby imitation so like um that there's uh, somewhat of a a, a whitish yellow with a little bit of yellow. There's a couple of baits like that that would definitely work as a goby imitation. So definitely check them out. They're cool baits. Um, you know, they are a little pricey. You're only getting one for five ninety nine. So if you buy them, I would advise to buy um, a couple in each weight. Don't buy just one weight because then if you go out and throw it and you realize it's snagging a lot, you know, you're just going to increase your odds of losing that bait. So, I mean, there's nothing wrong with making a bottom contact, but, you know, like I've, from our local river guys, they're always like, yeah, you don't want it to stop and sit there. You do need it to kind of, it's nice to have it be able to tick the bottom and move on its own and yeah. that sort of thing. Because that's where I always get snagged up. As soon as I know I have too much weight where that bait's just, you know, glued to the bottom. So, Definitely try out the different weights for sure, um, and then you'll you should find what you like. Obviously, so you got me interested. I, I think that bait would work really well in the Little Miami. Yeah, I think it. I think it'd do well in the Great Miami too. To be honest with you, I think both uh, both rivers, you know, are in better condition than they've been in a very long time. You know, I know a lot of people complain about the Little Miami of. You know, uh, it's bacterial slash whatever issues it has more downstream towards, you know, when you start getting the southern portions of it. But overall, for those <laughs> who aren't familiar with where we live, our rivers were garbage for a really, really, really long time, you know, with a lot of pollution and stuff. And the conservancy districts in our area have done quite an amazing job at buying up land and, you know, getting them cleaned up, you know. With uh, unfortunately, if a lot of people aren't always too keen on the EPA, but the more stringent what they allow people to dump into those waterways, the better they'll get. So, yeah, I was gonna say don't don't sugarcoat it and say South, call it what it really is. What? Cincinnati. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For those who don't know, Brad's a huge Pittsburgh fan, so every <laughs> time he can take a jab at the city of Cincinnati, he does. So. <laughs> But I mean, it. But that stuff starts occurring well before Cincinnati, you know. Yeah. Like, um, and I mean, just recently on the Great Miami River, Milltown's water treatment facility oh, yeah. had a, an issue with the water, and they were pumping in um, some 
nasty stuff and it was causing uh, some <clears throat> some uh what was it i think it was high levels e coli in the water yeah yeah so yeah they had that uh advisory going on for a while and, it's like a week or two and then when we had the tornado uh last year on memorial day um uh, montgomery county their like main facility water treatment facility was um right in the path of that tornado i don't know that it did structural damage but i know that it knocked down the power and the power is out for like a couple weeks there so that that facility was pumping straight raw sewage basically into the river system for almost two weeks i think or at least a week and there was an advisory not even to be fishing or near that water for quite some time so talk about well, chocolate milk of course i was out fishing <laughs> like hey man random turd right there like well <laughs> do what you gotta do i fished north of the river that whole year last year did you <laughs> yeah i was like i ain't going down there it's nasty <laughs> But you got to do what you got to do, man. It's, some things are just inevitable. Yeah. But, um, yeah, overall, super cool bait. Um, it It's really good. Um, you know, it says it, go, it crawls through gnarly structure. It does, man. It's it's pretty crazy. I mean, it picks up weeds a little bit, but it picks up that weird slimy green stuff, you know, that real uh, thin stuff that I, yep. people, you know, like the algae type stuff. But, um it's uh it's super cool um you know it, the paddle tail does have it, it's a it's it's not like a kai tech with a huge wobble um but what's nice is it does it does wobble even at like a slow retrieve so you're it's not like it's staying still or looking unnatural so mm -hmm. um definitely check it out man it's a lot of a lot of cool colors. They're a little off the wall when you first see them, but um, I think, in my yeah. eyes, when you see them from the top is where they really excel. Like, because I mean, you think about it, that that bait's going to be on the bottom, so yeah, it they're, looks good. I wouldn't say they're off the wall. Maybe uh, two of them. Yeah, they they look natural. Yeah, for the most part. Yeah, I mean, it's not like, I guess when I say off the wall, it's not your like typical like green pumpkin yeah. slash shad colors. Like they're, they're unique, you know, like um, I, I found a swim bait that's similar to it. It's not um, a mega bass. I, I, to be honest with you, I have no idea who made it. I picked it up some point and I bought it because of some of the water uh, some of the lakes I've been fishing have perch in them. And so it's like a, it's a yellow swim bait. that's very similar, a little bit bigger than the mega bass, but mm -hmm. I, uh, lost it the other day. Mm. Got snagged, but, um, you know, it looked good in the water, looked like a perch. So, but yeah, check them out. The, the real question is, would you eat it? Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> I mean, if I was a smallmouth bass, I was like, hey, look, man, there's a chartreuse swim bait coming over here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I eat a lot of garbage being a trash panda, so. <laughs> Dude, every time I see a raccoon now, I think of you. <laughs> the other day we were driving, me and Mike were going to the lake and we saw like five dead ones within like a mile stretch. And he's like, Dude, it looks like your brothers are quite depressed lately. And I'm like, <laughs> Oh, Whatever, dude. I just remember the, the first day I took the torpedo out, I was, I was bringing the boat up on the ramp to, to leave. There was a raccoon digging in the trash can, like five feet away from me. <laughs> and then he took off into the woods with whatever was in his hands. <laughs> yeah. or, uh, Duke Westcamp was talking with, uh, David Brooke was having something that was getting in his yard and setting off his motion cameras and stuff. And he was yeah. like, they're probably raccoons. And, He's like, dirty grubbers, and I told him to stop talking smack about my brethren. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. But, uh, but yeah, uh, definitely good bait. Uh, again, they are $5.99 a piece, but for those who are familiar with Mega Bass, they make expensive baits. 
So, but they are durable. They are not, <clears throat> you can hook a small mouth with this. And unlike a Kitech, usually that Kitech is either A, being thrown off your hook or mm-hmm. being ripped apart. Something, you know, usually happens with it that makes it act a little on the funky side. So <laughs> these things are pretty durable. So I've yet to see one be torn. I mean, you're not utilizing it like a Kitech. The weight and hook system is all built inside you know, the actual bait itself. There's no screw lock to rip out. There's nothing like that. Yeah. So pretty cool. First time I heard about them, man. Yeah. Check them out. Good bait. I will. I'll try it. All right. So that's all I got for them. But uh, anything else you want to add to Brad? No, we're good. All right. Well, everybody, thanks for uh, joining us on the final cast. Um, look forward to talking with everybody next week. Um, we've got the final losers bracket matchup this weekend for the spring madness, which has turned into the deep summer madness bracket. (laughs) So we apologize guys for this extending out a little further. We were shooting for the championship, like the final matchup between the winners and losers bracket to be around July 4th anyway. So we're only about a week out of our original date that we were estimating to be done at. So, um, yeah, so we got Sam Jones, Susie Roloff and Josh Smith are the top three finishers out of the losers bracket. They should be fishing from what I understand this weekend. So, um, I think I'll, I am, not a hundred percent sure, but I'll probably be joining Brian to host it on Sunday morning from seven to 11 Eastern standard time. Mm-hmm. It's a lot earlier than normal. Uh, we were doing them uh, about an hour later than that originally, but with the heat and everything that we've been going on, we're trying to kind of eliminate anybody having uh, like overheating phone issues, especially because when we're running the, um, the app to live stream it, Uh, we've got, we're hooked up to batteries and a lot of times when you're hooked up to a battery and you're in direct sunlight, you tend to overheat your phone. So hopefully that won't be the case. Hopefully everybody has good signal. I know we keep kind of, we've run into issues here and there with that. So we do apologize guys, but you know, usually the best fishing is the less traveled areas. So, but, uh, it'll be a good showdown. I'm excited. I'm excited to see, uh, Susie put some smack down on Josh and Sam. What about you? <laughs> hey, man. I, I don't know. This is going to be a good one, I think. Because you got Sam Jones, and then you got Susie. And then Josh Smith, man, he's 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 no... Uh, I don't know. I don't know what you want to call him. He, he's a sleeper, dude. I'm telling yeah. you, he, he's a good fisherman. Yeah, he is. But Susie's been on him, man. She's been putting up some good good limits lately so yeah but uh yeah so we have that coming up this weekend so uh feel free to join us facebook live saturday 7 to 11 eastern standard time so without everybody have a good night and we'll see you next week peace see see ya thanks for tuning in to another killer episode on paddle in finn don't forget to go check out our website at paddle the letter n in finn.com don't forget to check out the YouTube channel at Paddle and Finn. If you got a question, comment, want to hear from a future guest on a future episode, feel free to email us at paddle, the letter N, and Finn at gmail.com. Don't forget to follow us on social media at Paddle and Finn on Facebook and Instagram. Shout out to our show supporters, Angler. The Angler button and app just makes for a better time on the water and creates a virtual logbook for every fishing outing out on the water. Shout out to Rocktown Adventures, located in Northern Illinois, for all your kayaking, camping, and hiking needs. TRC Covers, protect your investment. Catch Products, shout out to Catch Products. Go to catchproducts.com and put the Paddle in Fin logo directly on your catch board. Shout out to Jigmasters Jigs. When in doubt, get the jig out. Go to jigmasters.com, use promo code PNF20 and save 20% on all your jig and tackle needs.